Good evening, dear colleagues. Let us resume our plenary. Uh, and uh, we're going to have now our debate on uh, enlargement package and European neighborhood policy. We have with us, uh, and it's a great uh, honor, uh, Commissioner Oliver Varelli, uh, Commissioner for Neighborhood and uh, Enlargement. Um, dear Commissioner Varelli, I would like to welcome you to the European Committee of the Regions, mayors and uh, regional leaders uh, all across Europe share best practices in implementing European policies and it helps regional and local authorities to improve their obligations as service providers and enable transparency and good governance to prosper. This is true within the EU and beyond its external borders. By joining forces with the EU's local authorities, our partners from neighboring countries can speed up reform, improve governance and promote decentralization and transparency. Our committee also promotes digitalization and the green transition, and we work to enhance the resilience of communities such as cross-border solidarity during the health crisis. Cross-border and territorial cooperation tools are used to promote peer learning and foster confidence building strategies. Cities and regions work together to localize the sustainable development goals and broaden the covenant of mayors to fight climate change with a view to anchoring our neighboring countries to the Union. Governance is multilateral, but also multi-level. Regions and cities can help the EU to make a success of capacity building initiatives from the bottom up. The first European grouping of territorial cooperation was created across between Ukraine and Hungary. And we have also supported the newly established Homadas in Ukraine, working with EU lead and creating peer learning arrangements focusing on decentralization. With the same commitment, we stand ready today to foster integrity in Ukraine and look forward to the enlargement of the Integrity City program. We believe in the added value of multilateralism and we have delivered on this in both the Eastern Partnership and the Union for the Mediterranean, CORLIP, recently proposed setting up an academy for public administration open to subnational level and I really encourage the Commission to support this proposal at the next summit. At the same time, we continue to promote the Mayors for Economic Change project and stand ready to work with the civil society and municipalities of Belarus to help its people through positive reform. We welcome the BRIC program for territorial development in Belarus and continue to offer the Commission our support to get the peer learning process started whenever possible. We also support the Barcelona process and we bring a territorial dimension to it through Arlen. We have set up a network of European and Libyan mayors able to catalyze change from continuous learning to fisheries, from water to waste management. In the last four years, we have helped establish internal dialogue in Libya and leverated funds for sustainable development, creating solid partnership with European peers. This has enabled the mayors of Tripoli and Benghazi, together with the elected officials of Friuli Venezia Giulia and Galicia, to learn how to develop the fishing industry for trading with Europe. Enhancing local democracy and territorial development is essential prior to any enlargement. And we want to stress that out. Together with the Council, of Europe's Congress of Local and Regional Authorities. We fought for the holding of municipal elections in Mostar, restoring local democracy after a decade. We continue to work with local authorities from all the area to help them reform public administration, fight corruption, and move closer to the union standards and legislation. Finally, we argue the case for international law prevailing over acts of provocation in the Mediterranean. When it comes to Turkey and the Mediterranean, 
I would hope that many of the country's mayors can still work to foster good relations with the EU and fight for fundamental freedoms and for change within the country. I would like to bring to your attention concerns expressed by the mayor in exile of Famagusta, who calls for the Union to defend European interests in Cyprus. And it's not only Cyprus, it's the whole of the Mediterranean. And let us not forget, Commissioner, that the borders of these countries are the borders of the European Union, and we need to protect them. So, dear Commissioner, again, thank you very much for joining us today. It's a great honor and privilege. The floor is now yours. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much for uh, providing me this uh, opportunity to talk to you and to engage directly with you. Uh, this is very much appreciated and it's been long overdue, I think. Um, however, this uh, completely exceptional year, unfortunately, prevented us from having a direct exchange so far. But I tried to make the most out of it uh, this time. So, first of all, I do welcome the very strong interest that uh, this committee is showing in uh, our policy fields, enlargement and neighborhood communicating on the strategic importance of these issues in your dialogue with the local and regional authorities is key. It is these authorities which are the closest, maybe, to citizens, and they provide many services that benefit the local community directly. For instance, the municipal uh, infrastructure, wastewater treatment, education or support to the SMEs, I think these are the key issues that touches the lives of people the most. Therefore, we are engaging with them as well, given their very significant role with regard to implementing EU support programs and to include citizens in the EU-related issues. As you know, the Western Balkans is a priority from the first day, first day in office for this commission. And not only it is a priority for this Commission, but it is a priority for all of us, including the leaders grouped in the European Council the last time uh, in May this year. From day one, we have been working, therefore, in support of the region along three very important tracks. First, we had to reinforce the renewed and renew the enlargement process through a revised methodology to make the policy more credible, more effective and more predictable, not only for the region, but also for our member states. Second, on this basis, we have been able to achieve the decision to open negotiations, accession negotiations with Albania and North Macedonia in March. And lastly, we are strongly focusing now on the speeding up of the economic convergence of the region with the EU and supporting its recovery efforts in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have adopted a major economic and investment plan for the whole region, as you know. And this plan aims at providing up to 9 billion euros in funding in the form of grants complemented by the new Western Balkans Guarantee Facility, which could raise and should raise at least 20 billion euros of funding. This investment package is structured around flagship projects in key areas such as transport, energy, the private sector and human capital development. And we believe that these projects have the potential to transform the region in the next four to five years and should bring the Western Balkans much closer to the EU than today. Just to illustrate the size of this operation, what I can already share with you is that we are mobilizing around one third of the whole of the GDP of the entire region. 
And we hope that this package is capable of raising the economic output of the region by at least 3.6%. And this package should address the major economic deficiencies that prevent the region from catching up, but also should bring about change that will create a credible European path for not only these countries, but also the people in these regions. Because we hope that through this plan, we can bring connections, railway connections, highway connections between all the capitals of the region. We do hope that we will be able to build high-speed broadband internet core networks between these countries and with Europe. We believe that we can change the landscape when it comes to the energy sector of these uh, countries by helping them to phase out coal. These could bring major changes, not only to the economies, but the people of these countries. I also believe that our European regions can play a very important role in helping the Western Balkans to implement the plan. For example, by sharing experience. One element, one experience like the experience of coal and carbon intensive regions in transition in Europe. Because as I said, phasing out coal is one of the key elements of this plan. And so is uh, connectivity with us. The Western Balkans and Ukraine will also benefit from regional specific support to boost innovation capacity, remove investment barriers and equip workers with the right skills to prepare for economic transformation. This is why we're currently supporting a pilot action for regions in industrial transition. Knowledge transfer between the EU and the Western Balkans is already taking place in the context of the Covenant of Mayors. A number of Western Balkan cities are already associated to this initiative and more should be encouraged to join. In 2018, upon your call, we launched a pilot in three Western Balkan countries, Albania, Bosnia, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Serbia, through the so-called TAIEX strategic support to local authorities. We supported and developed capacities in such key areas as administrative and management capacity, strategic planning, state aid, public procurement, and wastewater management. Based on the successes of the pilot, we are currently reflecting on how to provide support to selected local authorities in all Western Balkan countries. We hope to be able to test this approach in other regions as well, starting possibly with selected countries in the Eastern neighborhood. I welcome your continued interest in this matter and your support to peer learning activities with local authorities. Our neighborhood is of strategic importance to the EU, as I said. Therefore, we need to maintain a privileged relationship with all neighbors and continue to support their stability and foster prosperity. Never before was this more important than now, when we are all facing the same crisis, which is a double crisis, a health one and an economic one. It is for that reason, reason that we have reached out from the very beginning of, all, uh, of the crisis to synchronize our efforts in overcoming the health crisis and now the economic one. Let me thank you and the Conference of the Regional and Local Authorities for the Eastern Partnership for the excellent cooperation in strengthening the local dimension of the Eastern Partnership and in particular for a valuable contribution to the future post-2020 framework. Building capacity at local level is particularly important for providing better services to citizens and businesses, as well as increasing understanding and visibility of the benefits of the Eastern Partnership Policy. Through regional initiatives, we already activate uh, outside the capitals our Eastern partners. Let me provide a couple of examples. Through mayors of economic growth, the EU supports mayors and municipalities to design and implement local economic development plans 
to stimulate economic activity and support local businesses. The Covenant of Mayors, which is the EU's most trademark initiative for local and energy climate action, has grown into a network of 400 municipalities, covering around 40% of the population of the six partner countries. We're working in all these municipalities, supporting sustainable energy plans and implementing key projects such as on-street lightning and energy efficiency. I welcome the idea of setting up an Eastern Partnership Academy for public administration as well. We are happy to see interest from some of our Eastern partners and EU member states in direct exchange of experience. Based on the experience of the Regional School for Public Administration in the Western Balkans and member states initiatives, we are now developing a proposal on the Eastern Partnership Academy, which we hope that we can present as early as next year. As we move forward with the preparing of the post-2020 Eastern Partnership Agenda, we hope to continue our fruitful cooperation in the future and rely on your broad pool of expertise. Myself and my team would be happy to hear you um, about your ideas on engagement at local and regional level. Turning to the southern neighborhood. Recently, we have took the opportunity at the 25th anniversary of the Barcelona process to officially kick off our reflections and consultation process for a more strategic and ambitious partnership with that region. The consultation process will conclude in the first half of 2021 with the adoption uh, by the College of a joint proposal for a renewed partnership. The focus will be on economic development, trade and investment. The consultation process is now ongoing with member states, partner countries uh, and the like. The Commission recognizes the importance role of the Union for the Mediterranean and the Euro-Mediterranean Regional and Local Assembly for a stronger and strategic engagement with partner governments and local authorities to create a more inclusive and sustainable Euro-Mediterranean partnership. I encourage you and uh, the Euro-Mediterranean Regional and Local Assembly to further develop your cooperation with the Union for the Mediterranean to stimulate local businesses, support youth young entrepreneurs and encourage collaboration between local authorities and the private sector. I also welcome your partnership with the Union for the Mediterranean in the Arlen Award 2021, which helps showcase young innovative entrepreneurs working in cooperation with the local authorities for the local communities. The Commission is supporting local authorities through various climate related projects, most notably Klimament which engages directly with the municipalities and helps them in designing and funding energy and climate investment plans. Our project also serves as local office for the Covenant of Mayors. Last but not least, let me use this opportunity to thank you for your long-standing cooperation with my services on the Nicosia initiative in Libya. Following recent positive developments in the political process, Libya is now at a turning point. It is important to continue working with the local authorities to help improve their public service delivery capacities and foster stabilization in the country. The Commission is committed to further support the initiative. With this, I do thank you for your attention and I'm of course more than happy to answer any comments or questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me give the floor now to Nikola Dobroslavic from the EPP for four minutes. Thank you, President, dear Commissioner Varholi, dear colleagues. The communication on the EU Enlargement Package 2020 and Economic and Investment Plan for the Western Balkans are confirmation of the continued engagement of the EU institutions in the Western Balkan countries 
and reaffirms Commission's position that enlargement is in the political, economic and security interest of the EU. The communication is an accurate analysis of the situation in the Western Balkans. We noticed, though, that local and regional level is not represented enough in the document. Economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans, with the EU help for investments of 9 billion euro, is most welcome and can also foster the accession process. The Committee of the Regions is designing an opinion on the Commission's documents. The adoption of the opinion is scheduled for the plenary in March next year. The opinion will express the stance of the Committee of the Regions on those documents. It will focus on the position of local and regional authorities in the enlargement countries, on their role in the accession process and on the overall functioning of local democracy in those countries. The opinion will reinforce previous stance of the Committee of the Regions, especially the position that all the, the Western Balkan countries should become EU members. Their accession would be good for those countries, but also for the EU. But these countries must fulfill all the criteria for membership in the EU. Turkey must, first of all, convince the EU that it is willing to accept all EU standards and to share European values. The opinion will advocate strengthening of the position and of the role of local and regional authorities in the enlargement countries. It will address deficiencies in the functioning of local democracy, especially the phenomenon of the state capture, shortcomings in the rule of law, in media freedom, respect of minority rights, fight against corruption, and so on. The Committee of the Regions has, with local and regional authorities from enlargement countries, cooperation and dialogue through its joint consultative committees and its working groups. That is a good reason to have this Committee of the Regions involved in the negotiation processes. EU's commitment to the enlargement process towards Western Balkan countries is an opportunity for these countries, the economic and invest investment plan as well. But political will and determination by the partner countries remain key to success. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dobroslavic. Uh, the floor now on behalf of the PES group to Yaroslav Klimka. She's also the rapporteur for four minutes, please. Okay, let's move to our next speaker. On behalf of the Renew Europe Group, Jasna Gavrits, please. For three minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Dear Commissioner, Mr. Varheli, I would like to warmly welcome you on behalf of the Renew Europe Group. We Liberals are strong believers in EU enlargement to the Western Balkans. I'm the co-chair of the Joint Consultative Committee CORE has set up with local authorities in North Macedonia. I'm now sadly looking to the Western Balkans and seeing how yet another member state is delaying the start of negotiations with North Macedonia. The country took a bold step with the hard decision of changing the name of the country. Now the country is facing another hurdle. I'm concerned about the position of Bulgaria blocking the opening of negotiations with North Macedonia, something that already had been agreed in the Council conclusions in March. 
This is even more surprising from a country that was emphasizing a European perspective of the Western Balkans during its presidency in 2018. Indeed, Mrs. Pavlova, minister responsible for Bulgaria's EU presidency, stated in 2018, and I'm quoting, the peace, the calm, the stability and the future of Europe pass through the Western Balkans. The European project will not be complete without them. The end of quote. By not opening the accession negotiations as foreseen by the end of this year, Europe is taking a big risk. This might lead to national sentiment again to reach the surface in North Macedonia as well as in Bulgaria. We also risk making North Macedonia lose patience with the EU. We know too well that other foreign powers are interested in the region and if the EU is not there for them, others will be. EU must therefore reassess its leadership in the region and must urgently show to the people of the Western Balkans that the EU is there for them. As chair of the Joint Consultative Committee, CORE, North Macedonia, I will now look into what we can do more to be part of this process. I would personally like us to launch peer-to-peer -peer exercises. This has proven very useful in our cooperation with Ukrainian local authorities. In that case, the European Commission has supported the endeavor financially. I would therefore like to ask you if you believe the European Commission could play a role also here in assisting us in building up peer-to-peer -peer exercises with our counterparts in North Macedonia. My own municipality, Terbolia in Slovenia, has had a very good experience with our sister city, Valandovo, in North Macedonia. We started an Erasmus for young people, which has proven very successful. We are looking for good practices on both sides to share with each other. I believe it would be beneficial to put in place more projects and peer-to-peer -peer exercises between cities in the EU and cities in the Western Balkans with support of the EU. I would be happy to lead this process when it comes to exchanges between municipalities in the EU and North Macedonia through the Joint Consultative Committee Core North Macedonia. Thank you, Commissioners, thank you. and thank you all. Thank you. For the, on the the ICRU, please, Radislav Kotil. Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowny Panie Komisarzu, pozwoli Pan, że skoncentruję się na jednym temacie związanym z naszym sąsiedztwem, czyli z Białorusią. Protesty w Mińsku trwają już ponad 100 dni. W społeczeństwie przelewa się szara goryczy. Codziennie są setki bezprawnie zatrzymywanych ludzi. To ważne, że Unia Europejska wspiera te przemiany demokratyczne i wskazuje na nieuznanie w wyniku sfałszowanych wyborów. W Komitecie Regionów zastanawiamy się, jak władze samorządowe naszych regionów, naszych miast mogą włączyć się w tą pomoc. Myślę, że nie chodzi nam o geopolitykę, bo to przecież kwestia już państwowa, ale my samorządowcy chcemy wspierać społeczeństwo obywatelskie jego budowę. Ten plan wsparcia w mojej ocenie powinien przewidzieć minimum cztery działania. Po pierwsze powinniśmy stworzyć program wymiany doświadczeń między władzami lokalnymi, regionalnymi doświadczeń, jeżeli chodzi o korzystanie z pomocy europejskiej, jeżeli chodzi o kwestie związane z funkcjonowaniem demokratycznych samorządów. Po drugie, powinniśmy wyjść z inicjatywą programów stażowych dla pracowników samorządu terytorialnego z Białorusi, dla studentów, dla ludzi młodych, tak aby przygotować kadry do przemian demokratycznych i też do budowy społeczeństwa obywatelskiego. Myślę, że Komisja mogłaby stworzyć specjalny fundusz stażowy, który, który by umożliwiał samorządom z Unii Europejskiej przebywanie w ten wszystkim sposobów. Po trzecie apeluję o wsparcie Komisji Europejskiej dla powołania wschodnioeuropejskiego z Uniwersytetu Szkoły Administracji Publicznej w jednym z krajów Partnerstwa Wschodniego. Na pewno też mogłoby to przygotowywać kadry dla demokracji, proszę Państwa, dla demokracji, tak to po prostu mówię. Po czwarte apeluję, aby rozwijać i wzmacniać programy transgraniczne. Moje województwo uczestniczy w programie transgranicznym Polska-Białoruś-Ukraina. Od 16 lat sukcesami ten program jest wdrażany i 450 projektów na kwotę ponad 400 milionów euro. To są takie mierzalne wartości, ale ich efektem jest wiele, wiele wartości niemierzalnych, 
w tym oczywiście trwałe więzi społeczne, więzi personalne, one myślę, że są też jednym z cenniejszych elementów wdrażania tych programów. Także dziękując Państwu za uwagę, proszę Pana Komisarza o ustosunkowanie się do tych wspomnianych czterech rzeczy. Myślę, że czterech obszarów. Myślę, że wszyscy byśmy chcieli, aby Białoruś, Ukraina była... Thank you very much. On behalf of the EA Group, Mr. Józef Kobor, for two minutes. Dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, we are 25 years after the Dayton Peace Agreement, which ended the civil war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and 21 years after the end of the last Yugoslav war, war and 17 years after the Thessaloniki summit, which stated that the future of the region is in the EU. Uh, we speak about six Western, uh, Western Balkan countries. Uh, two countries have not been recognized as EU candidates, and there is very little hope they will uh, recently. Two countries are halted, halted in the Council because of bilateral problems and other political reasons, and only two have started the long negoti negotiation processes. Out of those, Serbia did not open a single chapter in the, uh, 2020, while B Montenegro opened only one. In that context, we, local and regional authorities, have a very important role to play in building and maintaining bridges with our peers and neighbors. And that also means actively involving them in the conference on uh, the future on, of Europe and the implementation of the EU's green agenda. We can do that through committee of the regions working groups and joint consultative committees, but also through initiatives for which we need your support, Mr. Commissioner, such as peer and to peer cooperation programs and uh, a new programming period is starting now. And I would like to point out a very useful study commissioned by our civics commission which we are present in a structured and concise way various EU funding opportunities for local and regional authorities in the Western Balkan. We can share our experiences in implementing EU policies, applying and implementing EU funded projects, etc. Mr. Commis uh, Commissioner, we are both Hungarians. Some of our regions, like my city of Pécs and your city of Szeged, have deep historical and cultural connections with the region. Thank you. Outside of the EU. Thank you very much from uh, the Greens, Uros Brezan, for two minutes. Thank you, President, dear Commissioner, dear colleagues. It is in our great interest that Union's neighborhood is safe, peaceful, and prosperous. And to achieve that, we should engage all our disposable means. That is why we welcome the Commission's proposal for an economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans, containing 9 billion euros in grants and an addition of 20 billion of guaranteed loans. We urge the Commission that these funds remain closely connected to the implementation of the Green Agenda for Western Balkans, which, uh, uh, with which EU would synchronize and stretch its Green Deal policy to our closest neighborhood ensuring a path towards climate neutrality by 2050 is not only an urgent challenge, but also an inviting opportunity to build a better future for all. We strongly hope such a cooperation will also strengthen pro-EU forces in candidate countries and those in the countries on the way to the status to take the necessary steps forward, enforcing their local democracies, rule of law and good governance and on the other hand, avoiding the danger of state capture. The Greens would like to underline that, especially for the Western Balkans, the awareness of tragic legacy of previous armed conflicts, unresolved disputes over sovereignty and territory is crucial, as well as is the willingness to tackle those problems. We are convinced that the approaches of alternative dispute resolution with the help of EU are the only possible way to a fruitful future cooperation within the region and also EU integration. Thank you. From Socha Valley, Julian Alps, Slovenia. Thank you very much. Is uh, Jaroslav Hlinka now uh, on behalf of the PES group available? 
Thank you very much. Let me start uh, with a clear message. Our enlargement partners need a real and trustworthy perspective for EU membership. We cannot expect from them to make progress on different reforms. And once they have do so, EU member states still block the beginning of negotiations. North Macedonia is a good example for this. They have delivered what we have asked for, and EU membership talks should have already started. However, the beginning of these talks is blocked, and uh, the intergovernmental conference cannot start as planned before the end of the year. To avoid any misunderstandings, I know, of course, that North Macedonia, like the other enlargement countries, has a long way to go until EU membership. Nevertheless, the, the way some of the EU member states are using the enlargement process to reach their own individual goals reminds me of the story of the donkey and the carrot on the stick. The donkey, in this case the enlargement countries, have a carrot on a stick. In this case, the goal of EU membership hanging in front of their nose. They keep running towards the carrot, but it never comes closer. Although I am not a member of the working group with Turkey, I know that uh, the COA, in the effort to maintain an open dialogue with our Turkish local and regional counterparts, held its annual meeting in Edirne one year ago. Edirne is located in that Greek-Turkish land border where Erdogan decided to maintain pressure on Western countries over the Syrian conflict by encouraging refugees on its soil to go to Europe. Turkey remains a key partner for the EU, but has to clarify if they still want to join the EU. The enlargement package 2020 presents an honest analysis of the progress made, but it really misses more information on the state of play on the local level. We as European politicians from the local and regional level know best that the situation on the national level does not represent the situation on the local and regional level. So for our work, it would be very useful to receive this additional input from the EU enlargement package in the future. To conclude, the Western Balkan countries and Turkey want to join the EU or are negotiating already to do so. Please use your power as a EU commissioner for enlargement to plea to EU member states to send positive political signals to these countries. If we want to stabilize the European Union and its neighborhood and present those countries an honest option of a European future, EU member states need to stick to their commitments, agree to the negotiation Thank framework you. for Albania and North Macedonia. Thank you very much. Thank you for so your now, attention. To the Commissioner for his uh, first reaction, Oliver Varelli, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, most of what we heard were, were comments, but let's uh, start with uh, the very important remark uh, uh, you, Chairman, made uh, when, it came, when it comes to our relations with Turkey. Yes, we see uh, a major decline in our relations, uh, although I'm convinced that uh, we have to 
always keep in mind the long-term relations that we want to have uh, with Turkey, because we are neighbors with Turkey, we are NATO allies with Turkey, and Turkey is a very important partner. Unfortunately, uh, Turkey has not been respecting our member states. Uh, Turkey has been violating the sovereignty of uh, uh, some of our member states, and we will always be united, and we will always be uh, helping uh, our member states, and we will stand by them. And I think that this is what uh, Turkey will need to understand. Uh, if not today, then maybe after tomorrow when uh, the leaders in the European Council will discuss this issue and we will see very clear messages emerging from there. And of course, the Commission will be ready uh, and willing uh, to implement uh, the outcome of uh, tomorrow's um, uh, discussions at leaders' level. Now, um, Coming to the first question I got from uh, Mrs. Gabric, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer, peer exercise in North Macedonia, I think we're more than open uh, to consider this uh, idea and I will uh, instruct my colleagues to take uh, quick uh, contact uh, with your uh, office so that we can um, see uh, what you have in mind exactly and that we can start uh, uh, to put this into, into operation. Now, uh, to Mr. Ortil on Belarusia, yes, I uh, fully agree with you. Um, we are in a very difficult uh, uh, period now, but we are convinced that uh, the people of Belarusia deserve our support and uh, we will continue to support them. This is why we have been uh, redeploying as much funding as possible directly to the people of Belarusia. This is something that we are working on, and uh, you might expect uh, clear decisions coming from the, from the uh, Commission these days in redeploying 25 million euros directly uh, to the civil society. We are also uh, working on a plan, uh, as some of you uh, was uh, quoting uh, this old Greek uh, uh, tale, tale about um, the donkey and the carrot. We are also preparing a carrot because we are hopeful that Belarusia will go through a democratic change and in the end we will be able to support even more and deepen our relations uh, with the Belarusia that is changed, that is transformed into a democracy and it is for that reason that we are also preparing a positive package. Uh, for uh, the new Belarusia that is yet to come. Uh, to Mr. Kobor, uh, he, he gave a, a gloomy picture of the Balkans, uh, something uh, that uh, I also share, but it is because of this gloomy picture that we need to double our efforts, and this is what we have been doing this year. And um, I share the frustration of, of all of you um, about the fact that we have not been able to follow up the major uh, political breakthrough we have achieved uh, this March in uh, opening accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania, and that we have not been able to uh, translate this uh, into uh, action on the ground, but uh, we work very hard uh, to make it happen as quickly as possible. I understand that uh, there is a bilateral issue uh, that prevented us from doing that, but we are reaching out to both parts, uh, both parties, uh, to be able to overcome this with sensible, pragmatic uh, solutions. I am confident that we can achieve this, but this also requires both uh, sides uh, to uh, show more flexibility and show more pragmatism. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, we need to continue to engage. I'm, uh, I'm very sure that we have a solution that should be acceptable for uh, both. And uh, we should not lose time by uh, engaging in debates that are leading us nowhere. Uh, we should show on the EU side our commitment to our previous decisions. And this is why I count on, on Bulgaria coming around in the end. 
Then uh, to uh, Mr. Brezan, um, our uh, economic and investment plan contains all the green elements uh, and a very clear link uh, with the uh, green deal that the Commission has put on the table for the EU member states. If you look at the plan, you will see the very strong focus of green investments throughout the Balkans. And uh, I must also share with you that uh, these priorities have not been set by us. And this is very important. We are not uh, setting priorities uh, the Western Balkans have never asked for. On the contrary, these priorities have been worked out together with them. It also shows true commitment, ownership uh, and uh, commitment on their side. Uh, when you look at the latest decision they have adopted in Sofia uh, last month and their uh, Berlin uh, Process uh, Summit, where they have committed to a Green Deal for the Western Balkans, uh, committing to our climate goals uh, as well. Um, now, uh, to Mr. Linka, finally, yes, I fully agree with you. We need to be uh, credible in delivering that uh, when there is delivery on the conditions, we should also be delivering on our side. And this is uh, part of the new uh, methodology that you have seen emerging. And now it is high time uh, to implement that new methodology. Thank you, Commissioner. Let's uh, move on with uh, our uh dear members who want to take the floor and uh, I give the floor now to Franz Schausberger for one minute. Ja, Herr Kommissar, vielen Dank für Ihre Informationen zur Erweiterung, uh, vor allem im Westbalkan. Und erlauben Sie mir ein paar kurze Anmerkungen. Erstens, ich würde mir sehr wünschen, dass trotz Ihrer Persönlichen, ihres persönlichen Einsatzes und Engagements die gesamte Kommission, die Erweiterung, die in der letzten Zeit meines Erachtens etwas in den Hintergrund getreten ist, wieder mehr in das Zentrum ihrer gesamten Politik stellt. Zweitens, in der, Gesam in der geplanten Diskussion über die Zukunft Europas müssen die Erweiterungsländer des Westbalkan jedenfalls zumindest als aktive Beobachter teilnehmen können. Denn ich bin überzeugt, dass die EU auch die Meinung jener kennen muss, die auf dem Weg in die EU sind. Das Dritte, und darüber wurde heute schon mehrfach gesprochen, ich bitte Sie, vor allem jene EU-Staaten oder jenen EU-Staat, der mit völlig uneuropäischen Argumenten die Aufnahme der Verhandlungen mit Nordmazedonien blockiert, zu überzeugen, dass äh, dieses Land damit ganz Europa schadet. Es geht ja nicht um den Beitritt, sondern um die Aufgabe, Aufnahme von Verhandlungen eines Landes, das schon seit 2005 den Kandidatenstatus hat. Und ich fürchte, das Ganze ist eine gewisse Gefahr für den Frieden in der ganzen Region. Und als letzter Punkt, ich möchte Sie bitten, dass im Erweiterungspaket... Thank, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stauschberger. Let's move now to Mr. Kaminskis for one minute. Mr. Roberto Ciambetti, please, for one minute. Grazie, Presidente, caro Commissario, gentili colleghi. Come è stato citato da altri membri prima di me, il Comitato delle Regioni promuove il dialogo subnazionale tra le autorità locali dei Balcani occidentali e quelle europee. Io stesso presiedo il Comitato Consultivo Misto tra il Comitato delle Regioni e il Montenegro. Nonostante la pandemia di Covid che ci affligge tutte le nostre attività, nel mese di novembre siamo riusciti ad avere in forma virtuale il nostro primo incontro. Come lei ben saprà, il Montenegro ha vissuto da poco le elezioni a tutti i livelli di governance. La scorsa settimana un nuovo governo si è finalmente insediato. Anche per questo motivo per noi è ancora più importante in questo momento rinsaldare i rapporti con i nostri partner. Come Comitato Consultivo ci siamo dati la missione 
di esplorare possibili sinergie tra le due sponde della Mare Adriatico su come poter trovare soluzioni comuni per la ripartenza economica. La mia terra, il Veneto e il Montenegro hanno molto in comune dal punto di vista storico ed economico e per questo è naturale poter cooperare anche in questi momenti difficili. Commissario, mi permetta di farle presente della, pres della pressante necessità che i nostri partner ci riportano in ogni incontro, Perché? ovvero quella di dare più volo agli enti locali. Grazie ancora. Thank you. The word now to Mr. Christoph. Okay. Then Anna Magyar, please. One minute. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Örömmel üdvözlöm körünkben biztos urat. Csongrád megyéből nézve az EU bővítése létkérdés. Fontos, hogy együtt erősebbek legyünk, stronger together, ahogy szoktuk mondani. Mint az EU bővítés egyik korábbi jelentéstevője, jól tudom, hogy vannak még részletfeladatok, de fel kellene gyorsítani például Szerbia esetében a folyamatot. A Vajdasági Tartományi Parlament elnöke Pásztor István mondta, egy JCC bizottsági ülésen, hogy szégyenletesnek érzi a hosszú húzavonát, és azóta bizony eltelt már több mint egy év. Biztos úr mindent megtesz saját hatás körén belül, köszönjük is, de más érintetteknek is komolyabban kellene venniük ezt. A keleti partnerség szintén szívügyem. Sajnálom, hogy a Budapesten megszervezett Korlip konferencia, amelyen biztos úr kiemelt előadóként szerepelt volna, a járványhelyzet miatt elmaradt, de bízom benne, jobb időkben be tudjuk pótolni biztos úrral együtt. Örvendetes, hogy biztos úr támogatja a keleti partnerség közszolgálati akadémia indítását. Megismerve a kemetika első tervezetét, úgy gondolom, fontos lenne kiegészíteni a környezetvédelmi klimaváltozási témakörökkel, továbbá a kulturális sokszínűség védelmével is, tekintettel a keleti partnerség, országainak sokszínűségére és a nemzeti kisebbségek kultúra gazdagító hatására. Köszönjük az erőfeszítéseket! Thank you very much. The floor now to Miria Verkapera. For one minute. Kiitos puheenjohtaja, arvoisa komissaari. Suomella on ulkorajaa Venäjän kanssa 1340 kilometriä. Meidän venäläisten naapureiden kanssakäyminen on arkipäivää. Yhteistyö kohdistuu kaupankäyntiin, matkailuun, kulttuuriyhteistyöhön ja koulutukseen. Viime vuosien aikana EUn naapuruusohjelmien avulla on kohennettu muun muassa rajanylityspaikkoja, tarkastuspisteitä ja liikenneyhteyksiä. Korona-aikaa lukunottamatta Suomen ja Venäjän välillä liikkuvat ihmiset ja tavarat vähin ongelmin. Me suomalaiset se, 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 seitsomme jämäkästi Euroopan yhteisrintamassa tuomiten Venäjän sotilaalliset teot ja vaatien pakotteiden pitävyyttä. Toivon, että naapuruusohjelman toteutu, toteutuksessa pystytään paremmin Euroopan ja Venäjän nykyisiä suhteita parantamaan. Thank you very much. The floor now to Agnes Rampal, please. For one minute. Bon. Oui, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Commissaire, euh, Monsieur le Président, euh, je voudrais vraiment saluer l'ambition de la Commission européenne de renforcer le partenariat avec la rive sud de la Méditerranée dans le cadre de la nouvelle stratégie de voisinage sud attendue au premier trimestre 21. Nous sommes 22 pays copropriétaires d'un morceau de rivage de cette Méditerranée qui est notre mer commune. Il est donc important que cette nouvelle stratégie s'attache en priorité aux défis les plus pressants du bassin méditerranéen, dont bien sûr le changement climatique, la sécurité à la relance, euh, de, alimentaire et la relance durable suite à la pandémie. Ces nouveaux défis réclament un cadre politique qui associent les collectivités territoriales et qui permettent d'aborder et de résoudre les problèmes de manière conjointe et de mieux exploiter le potentiel commun de la région. 
en particulier une stratégie macro-régionale pour la Méditerranée qui rassemblerait les représentants de l'Union européenne, des États et des régions, ainsi que les autres partenaires territoriaux et la société civile, permettrait de renforcer la coopération en Méditerranée et, à, et donnerait une plus grande cohérence aux différentes interventions sur les priorités identifiées par l'Union pour la Méditerranée et la politique de, de voisinage. Merci beaucoup, madame. Merci beaucoup. Je vais maintenant donner la parole à M. Kaminskis, si il est connecté, pour une minute. Il n'est pas connecté, donc, commissaire, vous pouvez aller avec vos remarques finales. Now, okay. Thank you. Um, let's go one by one to Mr. Schausberger. Um, I think that the entire commission is uh, committed to the Western Balkans. At least this is uh, what I sense and, and, and what I see from the support I get from other colleagues, but also especially from our president. As you have seen, uh, maybe the best example is the COVID crisis. We have been very quick in mobilizing all the help for the Western Balkans, uh, first, actually, uh, among our neighborhood. And we have been able to mobilize as much as 3.3 billion uh, euros. For this, I needed the support of the entire Commission. So for me, this is a very clear uh, commitment uh, from all of us uh, towards the region. On your second question, whether they should participate in the future of Europe com conference, Of course, uh, it's very important that they also share their views uh, with us within that context. Uh, and uh, it is always very important to, to listen to countries before they are joined. But there is one trap that we should avoid, which is that uh, making enlargement to be the topic of the future of Europe. Because enlargement is not an issue uh, that would have to be debated within the context of the future of Europe. We have clear articles already in the treaty about the fact that enlargement is a permanent policy uh, of uh, the European project because we want to bring peace and prosperity throughout our continent. Um, third comment was uh, about um, uh, circumventing the blockages. This is how I, I noted it down, basically to, to circumvent the veto of the member state concerned when it comes to North Macedonia uh, in this case. Well, um, it is a very difficult uh, and very heavy question. So I wouldn't like to give you a hasty answer to that. I don't think that it is um, the right approach uh, because after all, enlargement is about all of us. Enlargement is about all member states feeling comfortable about the whole process. There are so many points in which we need all member states to agree, uh, agree that the, it is no point pushing somebody aside and only to find out later on uh, that their opposition to the project have only grown. So this is why my message has been that we need to find pragmatic solutions. And after all, becoming an EU member state is all about being able to make pragmatic choices, pragmatic decisions, and, uh, and to come to common understanding, even on most difficult uh, issues. So I do hope that through this process, we will get there. And uh, as I said, we are doubling our efforts uh, to get there. To Mr. Ciambatti, um, yes, we need more synergies with the Southern Neighborhood. And with this, I would like to also an answer to Mrs. Rampal uh, that uh, we need the Southern Neighborhood uh, to be more prosperous, more secure and more stable. And it is for that reason that we are now reaching out to them, because we see also a huge potential in redesigning our partnership. The huge potential emerges from this crisis because we see that very many companies are now looking for new investor investments 
uh, new uh, geographic areas to invest in. And the single biggest challenge that we face also in the Sun neighborhood is due to the fact that we have a significant divergence between the economic development of the Southern neighborhood and Europe. And if we, if we are able to help them with this priority to build more resilient, stronger economies, diversify their economies, we will have a much more stable, much more secure neighborhood. And also we can create a buy-in on their side on issues that are highly important to us like building a strong economy for them. For us, uh, of course, there are many issues like uh, addressing illegal migration. Uh, to Mrs. Um, Magyarana, uh, yes, I fully agree with you that uh, we have a unique opportunity in front of us now in Serbia. We have a government with uh, a large majority in the parliament with a program that is focused on reforms, reforms without which no European path can be brought forward. The first, the first delivery we have seen already these days, and I think that if Serbia is ready to engage, the EU is also ready to engage. And this is for that reason that we need to speed up our efforts and work with Serbia. Of course, we are not here to do it alone. We need Serbia uh, to come along and to deliver. Um, and finally, on the relations with Russia, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, Russia does not uh, make part of my portfolio, because that is a very difficult uh, topic. As long as Russia is threatening its neighbors and occupying their territory, I, don't, I fail to see how we could move uh, forward uh, with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Varelli. The discussion or debate uh, on um, EU enlargement has reached its, uh, its end. So I would like to thank you very much for your time, your commitment and your hard work. And I would also like to thank all of our members, our colleagues who have been following all day this second day of our plenary. The second day of our plenary is now over.